Hello, I'm Dot Throssell. I'm a proactive carer from Plymouth and I just want to be involved in raising awareness of mental health issues and some of the things that can go wrong. Well, the background to my son's experience is around a lot of things really, but I suppose in particular is around the time that he was uh, attempted to be detained under a 136 uh, section when he was not under the care of the mental health services because he'd left Plymouth and gone all over the place and not had any treatment for some time. Um, the police set out, as I say, to detain him under a 136 because of a report from a hotel where he'd been staying about his behaviour. Unfortunately, in the consequence of that, there was obviously a fracas. My son was not very compliant and it ended up with him assaulting one of the police officers. He was then taken to the nearest police station and supposedly, although I don't know the details on this, seen by somebody who said that he didn't require any further assessment, he didn't need a Mental Health Act assessment and he was fit to be charged. So therefore he was charged with an assault on a police officer. Um, and I just feel very angry about the fact that everything indicated together with the fact that there was a PNC marker on his file about the fact that he had a diagnosis of schizophrenia and had mental health problems and was a vulnerable person. I'm not even sure that he had an appropriate adult with him at the time of his arrest. And so I think there are lots of queries and questions over this. And I feel, unfortunately, six months later, he ended up being detained in a mental health unit, but this could have all happened on the day in question rather than six months down the road. I found the treatment and the support from the police quite varied in lots of respects. Some police officers have been very helpful, very understanding, very sympathetic and taken time to talk with me and discuss matters with me. Other police officers I've found almost the opposite, unhelpful, unsupportive, unsympathetic, almost anti in their approach and that makes it difficult to deal with them because I'm never quite sure what response I'm going to get when I really need a positive response. My dealings with CPS have been very little and unfortunately the very little experience I've had with them has been somewhat negative on the occasion of when he was arrested for assaulting a police officer and I wrote to them a long story, a long detailed story of my son's background and his illness and his diagnosis and again was told that it wasn't of interest to them. They were only interested in getting a conviction and I would need to take my plea somewhere else, preferably the defence solicitor or something of that nature. I'm afraid my experience of the courts again is a somewhat negative one. Um, on each occasion we have tried to make contact with the courts uh, to raise the issue of my son's mental illness and on the first occasion it was more or less dismissed. At that point he didn't have a diagnosis so I don't really see the point of taking that further. However on the second occasion he had this PNC marker, we had we sent letters from his consultants and previous other um, letters that demonstrated his diagnosis and his treatment and the fact that he hadn't been compliant with treatment for some considerable time. Unfortunately the legal advisor to the courts sent us back a reply saying that this was third party hearsay and therefore would not be relevant and not passed on to the magistrates to consider. Following that my husband tried to stand up in court and tell his own story and eventually was told if he didn't stop and keep quiet, he would be arrested for contempt of court. It had no bearing on what was being conducted within the case. Um, the only really positive session I've had with the courts was A, through CAS, which is basically located in Plymouth, which is a community advice and support service. They have been absolutely brilliant and have given me as much support and help and advice as they can possibly give. Um, Rethink Mental Illness also got involved uh, together with my MP and they both wrote to the courts following our basic knockback. Um, and thankfully there was 
then further acknowledgement and recognition by the courts that this would need to be taken into consideration. This ended up with my son being um, advised, or basically the court being advised, that he needed a pre-sentencing report conducted to look into this further. But without their help, I do wonder whether we would have got that far or whether he would have ended up being convicted and possibly put in prison. Unfortunately, again, my experience of defence solicitors is not altogether positive. When we were finally advised to make contact with our defence solicitor, um, we wrote to him, again, gave a lengthy detail, again, included the letters and the evidence that all related to our son and his mental illness. I do recognise that from his point of view he had to be guided by my son and unfortunately my son really resists having his mental health issues brought into any of this. Uh, therefore he said it was something that he couldn't possibly do without my son's permission and if my son was not willing to do that he couldn't go ahead and do that. However he did I think make some references to various people that indicated there might be a need for further investigation. We spoke to two other defence solicitors, one who was just um, the person that was put in place on the first day of trial and he immediately said to us, oh don't go down that road, whatever you do don't go down that road. If he ends up being classed as mentally ill he'll be in hospital for years and years and years and that will be the end of everything. I think that was a very negative um, answer to give me. Thankfully, I think I knew a little better. And as I say, I'd, I'd been in touch with other sources of advice and help who told me that was not something to really worry about. But even his second defence solicitor said that if it came to light from the court that he was um, somebody suffering from mental illness and he became very unwell and acted in this way when he was psychotic, he would be seen as mad and bad and therefore a hospital order would automatically be granted to keep him safe. Again, I found this very negative information and if this information is given to other people, I'm sure it will scare them off of trying to take it any further. I've got very limited experience of probation services. The only experience I have got is that I know my son was referred for a pre-sentencing report to the probation services and they accepted a letter from me that I wrote um, to try and defend my son and his actions and the cause of his actions. Um, they never actually officially returned any sort of two-way conversation to me but my son was given his pre-sentencing report which obviously had very seriously picked up on his mental health issues and made this very plain in their report and they recommended that he needed to be seen by a psychiatrist for a psychiatric assessment so I do feel that was the positive side that came out of his probationary pre-sentencing report meeting. I think there needs to be a great deal more information available out there to all and sundry, not just respective interested parties, but to the general public. I think there needs to be better sources of advice and support for people who find themselves in these situations and don't know where to turn. Um, I think that ought to be far better sharing of information between various agencies and other ways of supporting and advising people caught in this um, horrendous type of situation. There needs to be a lot more positive work done there and then hopefully the police, the criminal justice system in general, the courts and the solicitors involved will have a better knowledge and understanding of where these processes can go wrong and what can be done to improve it.